Hi, thanks for coming to my video for my uh, Umarex products. The first one I'm going to show you is the blow dart that I've made for the Umarex shotgun. So basically what it is is a 5 inch needle, typical blow dart, uh, with the piece that I've made on the back to make it work and shoot out of the Umarex 68. Now in front of you, you see it shot into a piece of wood. Now what happens when you start shooting into things like wood and cardboard is it tends to bend and break. Now this thing has just barely come through three quarter inch plywood, but it'll go through half inch wood, but again, there's just too much force behind it. It can't push through quick enough to not bend and uh, cause damage to the needle like that. Same basic thing happens to cardboard, and I'll show you that in a second. I thought the easiest way to test this and to show you how it would work uh, on an actual target, be it animal or human, would be to use meat. And this is a very large pork roast. And I'm gonna fire a couple shots into it and see what it does. I think it does have a bone in it, so I'm gonna try it at a couple different points. Uh, maybe I'll miss the bone on one, one time and hit the bone the other time. So here we go. Now in a case like meat, it's the one thing that doesn't cause it to bend. So what you have is that five inch needle, in this case, going clear through with an inch of the needle passing through. This one uh, bottomed out, but at the direction it was at five inches is inside this. So basically man or animal, if you were to shoot man or animal, that's what you could expect from it, is uh, it passing through flesh until it hits a bone or going to full five inches in. Now I mentioned before what happens when you shoot cardboard and wood and uh, go ahead and do that for you real quick. In the case of cardboard, you're going to see something similar to what you see in the wood there. It will pass a couple three inches in, but the force still ends up uh, overpowering it and you get a bend. So there's uh, two inches of needle showing. So with that, you've got three inches of needle inside the cardboard uh, and it will damage the needle. Fortunately, these things are really, really cheap. So if you decide to get my mold and uh, use my mold to make these, the blow darts themselves are really cheap. And let's give it a try on wood. So once again, hits the wood, goes in, didn't go quite as far as the last one did, and it bends the, the nail, or the needle. So if you don't want it to bend, you're going to need to have a meat target or something that's very similar to a meat target to uh, fire these things into. And then uh, one more time, let's fire just one more into it. In this case, if it's a meat type target, you're gonna be able to do this over and over again. So there you go, it's a full five inches into it. If the uh, rubber piece is right up against the meat and I don't feel it, so it's fully inside it. Now, how do I make these? I make these with this. This is my 68 caliber mold that probably got you here to the video that I sell on eBay. Uh, CNC machined, polished insides to where it's easy to remove the uh, uh, whatever type of ammo you make after you've made it. I started out with one of these little uh, 68 caliber uh, 3D ones that uh, I got online for 20, 30 bucks. It was okay, but the problem is the inside, just because it's rendered with 3D, yeah, is very scaly and it's a little hard to get your ammo out after you're done. Plus the temperature of this is so close to the temperature of hot glue which you're using to make these ammo, these different types of ammo, that it tends to stick and actually start to deform this over time. So again, that was my purpose for coming up with an all aluminum one. Uh, the hole in the bottom is 3.5 millimeter. The reason for that is for a lot of these ammos, what you want to do is to have something like a BB in the front. Like in the case of something like this, this is a larger pellet. This is a seven millimeter pellet. It won't pass through. But even in the case of a small BB, which is 4.5 millimeter, again, you won't have that problem of having it pass through. The shape of it, you can kind of tell there, goes ahead and gives it a cone on the front, makes it a little bit better for travel. I've even tried a few different things along the way. This is made with that same mold. What this has is 50 grains of lead shot in the bottom with wax. Heated, forms it together. Uh, when the thing is shot out, it explodes on impact. 
At the end of this video, I'll probably pause it, go out into the garage and show you this one and one other round, which is a salt and pepper round using a cayenne and ghost pepper mixed in with rock salt. When this thing's fired, it explodes on impact. And what you get in a wound is glass, rock salt, and some pretty nasty pepper. Um, I've even tried a few pretty odd things like this. This is a Sabo for being able to fire a 223 bullet. And let's go ahead and give this one a try too into the meat. This is not something I've done before. My guess is you're gonna see the plastic piece pop away and uh, the bullet will actually go into the meat. So let's see. There you go, the plastic piece is right there. The bullet is fully inside the pork roast. And let's see where it's at. Let's see. <laughs> they almost passed through. The cavity is about three inches deep. So that put that 223 round three inches into this pork roast, which is the same thing you could expect if you were to fire it at something made of meat. At this point, I'm going to pause. And the next time you see this, we'll be out in the garage and we'll try a couple of these rounds that I was telling you about.